Okay, so um, <laughs> we've got a ton of research on autism today. Yeah. A lot of it's about women's experiences, but there's this one article okay. about being both autistic and non-binary. And yes. I'm, I'm really curious what happens when those two identities yeah. kind of come together. It's like it adds a whole new dimension to the conversation. Right. We talk about the challenges of autism. Yeah. And then when you layer on top of that, all of the expectations that society has about gender. Exactly. Like being in two different worlds at the same time. Yeah, and this article, the author really talks about that pressure to conform to gender norms, mm -hmm. even when they never felt right. Yeah. And then you add in the sensory overload and the anxieties that come with autism. Yeah. It's like a double whammy. It really is. It's like trying yeah. to solve a puzzle mm -hmm. where the pieces keep changing shape. Mm. The article actually uses this term double empathy problem. Huh. Have you heard of that? I haven't, no. It's fascinating. <laughs> so it suggests that autistic individuals might have difficulty understanding non-autistic people. Okay. But then at the same time, the reverse is true too. Oh. Non-autistic people often misinterpret autistic communication. Interesting. So you can see how that would cause yeah. some problems. Absolutely. And now imagine layering on top of that yeah the complexities of gender identity and expression that don't fit neatly into those two categories yeah. like male or female yeah the, the potential for misunderstandings just explodes yeah wow double empathy problem <laughs> I, I like that i'm gonna have to remember that it's a good one it is um it makes me think about diagnosis yeah you know, the author talks about getting diagnosed late. Mm -hmm. And we know that that's common, especially for women. Yeah. Could this double empathy problem make it even harder to get recognized for someone who's also non-binary? Oh, for sure. I yeah. mean, the diagnostic criteria are right. often based on how autism presents in boys. Okay. So anyone who deviates from that, uh -huh. whether it's because they're female yeah. or because they express themselves in gender non-conforming ways, right. they might get overlooked. Yeah. Like those old Where's Waldo books. Yeah. If you're looking for the wrong pattern, you'll never find them. Okay, that's a perfect analogy. Yeah. Um, and this is where I just, I'm constantly impressed by the people in these stories. Mm -hmm. Because despite all of these challenges, yeah. the author talks about finding a real sense of belonging with other autistic non-binary people. Right. It's like they finally found their tribe. It's so important. That feeling of belonging. Yeah. You know, to feel seen, to feel understood. Right. The article really highlights how powerful that can be absolutely for mental well-being yeah and it makes me think about all the online forums and support groups oh, yeah. that are popping up like there's one mention in this article it's specifically for non-binary autistic adults mm -hmm. they share advice on everything wow sensory friendly clothing yeah. navigating social situations mm -hmm. finding doctors who get it it's like this whole network yeah, of support. It really is. That you might not find mm -hmm. in an right. everyday life. Yeah, absolutely. So it's this reminder that even though things can feel very isolating, yeah. you're not alone. No, you're not. And the article doesn't sugarcoat things either. Right. It says finding your community is just one piece of the puzzle. Of course. You need self care too. So important. To one. deal with living in a world that wasn't really made for you. Yeah, especially when you're constantly navigating societal expectations that don't align with your own internal experience. Right. The article really emphasizes sensory regulation. Yes. Things like weighted blankets, yeah. noise canceling headphones, yeah. even those sensory deprivation tanks. I've always been curious about those. Oh, have you? Yeah. Well, imagine a space where you can float weightlessly. Okay. In darkness and silence. Uh-huh. Completely cut off. Wow. From all external stimuli. That sounds amazing. For someone who's easily overstimulated. Yeah. It yeah. can be incredibly restorative. It sounds almost like a form of meditation. Mm -hmm. And the article also talks about mindfulness. Yeah. And grounding techniques for anxiety and sensory overload. It's like having a whole toolkit. It is. Full of strategies yeah. that you can pull from. That you can try. Exactly. Yeah. And speaking of things that resonate, there's this other part of the article that really stuck with me. Okay. It's about reclaiming language and identity. Oh, yeah. The author talks about choosing to identify as non-binary mm. as an act of defiance against that gender binary that never felt right. It's such a powerful concept. It is. Rejecting those labels that other people try to put on you right. and defining yourself yeah. on your own terms. Yeah. And for some autistic individuals yeah. who already feel like they're on the outside looking in, right. that power to define yourself mm -hmm. must be so liberating. I can only imagine. Right. 
You'll it's like saying, I'm not going to let society tell me who I am. Exactly. Or how I experience the world. You get to decide that for yourself. Yeah. And that brings us to another important point. Okay. Finding good healthcare providers. That can be tricky. It can. Yeah. The author talks about the challenges of finding therapists and doctors who understand both autism and non-binary identities. It's true. A lot of healthcare professionals still don't have the training to provide good care to people who are both. Yeah. It sounds like a real struggle. It is, but the article mentions some online directories. Oh, good. That can help. That's good to know because this deep dive yeah. is about more than just understanding autism and non-binary identity. Right. It's also about understanding the barriers exactly. that these folks face. Recognizing those systemic things that can get in the way. Yeah, absolutely. And this conversation is already opening my eyes. Yeah. It's so many layers of complexity and resilience. Lots to unpack. I want to keep going, but I think... <laughs> I know, me too. We need a moment to process. A little break. Yeah, to digest. Yeah. So let's take a pause here okay. and come back to explore some of the specific challenges and strengths in part two. Sounds good. I have a feeling there's still so much more to uncover. Oh, definitely. You know, we were talking about barriers. Yeah. One of the papers you gave me really dives into the challenges. Okay. For autistic non-binary people in schools. Okay, in education. Yeah, and it goes beyond just Bullying and social isolation, mm -hmm. which are sadly pretty common for autistic students in general. Right. But it's also about how rigid some school systems can be. You mean like all yeah. the rules and routines? Exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I could see how yeah. that would be hard for someone who needs predictability, yeah. but also needs flexibility to manage sensory overload mm -hmm. or, you know, express their gender in a way that feels authentic. Right. Imagine being told you have to wear a uniform. Oh, yeah. That's physically uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Or being constantly misgendered by teachers and classmates. Oh, yeah, that would... It makes learning so much harder. Right. And the research actually shows it can lead to higher dropout rates. Oh, wow. That's yeah. that's really sad. It is. But not surprising, okay. given what we've been talking about. And it makes me think about this idea of high masking. Oh, yeah. That came up in a few of the sources. Mm -hmm. Could you explain that a little bit more? Sure. So high masking is basically how some autistic people, okay. often women and girls, learn to kind of camouflage their autistic traits. Okay, to fit in. Exactly. They might suppress stimming behaviors, uh -huh. force eye contact, yeah. or even script conversations yeah. to seem more neurotypical. Okay. And while it can be a way to navigate a world that isn't always understanding, yeah. it comes at a cost. Right. It sounds exhausting. It's incredibly draining. Yeah. It can lead to burnout and anxiety. For sure. And for someone who's also non-binary, yeah. I imagine that masking could be even more complex. Oh, absolutely. They might be masking both their autistic traits and AD, their gender identity. Wow. Trying to conform to neurotypical expectations yeah. and cisnormative expectations at the same time. Yeah. It's like trying to juggle two sets of social scripts. That is a great way to put it. Yeah. No wonder the research shows higher rates of mental health challenges. Sadly, yeah. For this group. But I want to come back to the strengths for a minute. Okay. Because the article we started with, the yeah. personal one, really yeah. focused on those two. It did. And in fact, yeah. Yeah. some researchers argue that autistic individuals, okay, especially those who are also non-binary, yeah. can actually develop unique skills okay. and perspectives. Interesting. Precisely because they've had to navigate mm -hmm. these complex social situations. I like this. Really? It's like turning the challenges into superpowers. It is. So what kind of skills are we talking about? Well, think about it. Uh -huh. If you've spent your life yeah. observing social cues and adapting, you probably have a really strong sense of empathy. Okay. And you probably understand social dynamics better than most. Interesting. You might also be really good at things like pattern recognition. Yeah. Problem solving. Oh. Huh. Thinking outside the box. That makes sense. And those are valuable qualities yeah. in lots of different fields. Yeah, absolutely. So instead of seeing autism as like a yeah. deficit or something, mm -hmm. maybe we should be celebrating these strengths. Yes. And creating opportunities for autistic non-binary foes to really thrive. 
100%. And one of the studies you shared yeah. talks about a growing movement within the autism community okay. to reclaim this idea of neurodiversity yeah. and move away from that medical model of disability. So instead of trying to fix autistic people, right. we create environments where their unique talents are valued. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. It makes me think about that autistic artist Oh yeah. we both follow online. I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, their work is so vibrant. It is. And they're so open about how their artism influences their art. It's inspiring. It is. And it reminds me yeah. that diversity in all its forms mm -hmm. really makes our world better. Absolutely. When we embrace neurodiversity. Yeah. And gender diversity. Yeah. We all benefit. Okay. But I do want to touch on another topic that came up in the research. Okay. So it was a sensitive one. All right. But I think it's important to talk about. What is it? Religious trauma. Yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah, we know that religion can be a source of comfort. For sure. For a lot of people. Right. But it can also be harmful. Yeah, especially for people who don't fit into those rigid doctrines. Exactly. And it seems like autistic, non-binary people mm -hmm. might be especially vulnerable to this. Right. I'm thinking about the articles that talked about the pressure to conform to gender roles. Yeah. Within certain religious communities. Yeah. Or the idea that you have to suppress stimming behaviors yeah. because they're disruptive or whatever. Mm. Right. Imagine being told that your autistic traits are a sin. Oh, gosh. Or that your gender identity is wrong. Yeah. That can be so damaging. He can to someone's self-worth and mental health. It's like a double rejection. It is. From society and your own faith community. Right. And that's got to be incredibly isolating. It is. And unfortunately, yeah. a lot of religious institutions just aren't equipped yeah. to support LGBTQIA plus people, right? let alone those who are also autistic. This is definitely an area where we need more education. Absolutely, and more advocacy. Yeah, we need to create spaces within religious communities mm. that are welcoming to everyone, really? regardless of their neurodiversity or gender identity. It's about building that compassion and understanding yeah. so that everyone feels safe to be themselves. Absolutely. Well, this deep dive has taken us down some yeah. interesting paths, for sure. Yes. We've explored challenges, mm -hmm. celebrated strengths, yeah. and tackled some really important topics. Yeah, we have. We've really only just scratched the surface. I know, right? There's so much more yeah. to learn about this intersection of autism and non-binary identity. There is, but before we wrap things up, okay. I want to share one more piece of research okay. that I found really interesting. Listening. It focuses on the concept of intersectionality. Oh, that's such a key idea. It is, right? For understanding the experiences of marginalized groups. Yeah. And this study argues hey. that we need to move beyond just acknowledging the overlap of different identities. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you're autistic, Andy, you're non binary. Right. And start really looking at how those identities interact. Yeah. How they actually influence each other. Exactly. Because it's not right. just about adding identities together. It's yeah. about understanding those unique dynamics. That emerge at the intersection. Yes. And this research suggests okay. that when we take that intersectional approach, yeah. we can come up with better strategies mm. for supporting people who are dealing with multiple layers of marginalization. It's about recognizing yeah. that everyone's experience mm -hmm. is different. Right. And there's no one size fits all solution. Absolutely. This conversation has been so enlightening. It has. I feel like I've gained a whole new understanding of the complexities yeah, uh, and nuances of this intersectional identity. I'm so glad we had this deep dive. Me too. And before we go, okay. I want to leave our listeners with a final thought. All right. What is it? We've talked a lot about the challenges mm. faced by autistic non-binary folks. Yeah. But I think it's so important to remember yeah. that they are not defined by their challenges. Right. They are so much more than that. They are. They're artists, activists, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. scientists, writers, musicians, yeah. athletes. All of those things. Right. Their neurodiversity and their gender identities are just yeah. two parts of who they are. It's about seeing the whole person. Exactly. So as we wrap up this deep dive, okay. I want to ask our listeners to think about mm -hmm. how they can be better allies yeah. to autistic non-binary people it could be educating yourself yeah challenging your own biases yeah supporting organizations mm -hmm. that are doing good work yeah or just listening with an open mind just listening right and remember See, the yeah. journey to understanding and allyship yeah is 
ongoing. It's a process. It is. That never really ends. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive. Thanks for having me. We hope you've learned some valuable things uh -huh. that you can take with you. Oh. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, yeah. and keep celebrating the diversity of human experience. That question about